Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Phil Tippett. Uh, the man doesn't need an introduction, but I'm giving him one anyway. Uh, he uh, is a master of animation and uh, effects, and we're just grateful to be interviewing you, sir. Um, and uh, you have a new film out that premiered at the Lucarna Film Festival called Mad God. Uh, how are you, Phil? That looks like a Mad God background. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> I know the shot well. Indeed. How did this movie come about? Can you talk to us about that? Uh, when I was 10 years old or so, I was, you know, totally into monsters, learning how to sculpt and draw. And uh, my dad was an artist and he had a, um, you know, art book library. And uh, so he knew I was into monsters and he showed me a book on Hieronymus Bosch and Peter Bruegel. And that set off some kind of low vibration, you know, that gradually grew when I learned more about filmmaking and whatnot to make a Hieronymus Bosch and Peagle, Peter Bruegel movie. Yeah. And you, uh, you actually started on the film when you were working on RoboCop 2. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it kind of got shelved. What, what happened there? Oh, we were shooting on 35 millimeter film, which is, you know, really time consuming. And, um, and um, the scope of the project was just too big. You know, mm -hmm. so I had to put it on hold and, um, but it was only on hold, you know, right. I kept going and I kept, uh, you know, doing research and, you know, psychology and, you know, art and archeological history and like anything I could get my hands on, you know, Carl Jung and Freud. And so in between gigs, you know, or, or in the evenings, or if I had days off, you know, I would just study or come back to, you know, my workspace in the back and, and uh, you know, piddle about. It, this, this film, it, I mean, would you say it got shelved or, or it just kind of got put to the back? Well, because... no, uh-uh. No, I always had hope for it, even after it, it had to be abandoned. Um, I wouldn't have abandoned it, but I'm glad that I did because that 20 year period, um, you know, when I was doing the day job thing, you know, was, was really probably the most important part. And, you know, I was given license for that. My, my wife was in the editorial department at, um, at, uh, on Amadeus. And so we'd go out to dinner with Milos Foreman from time to time. And, you know, as a young filmmaker, I asked him for some advice. And he said, if you want to take a good shit, you have to eat a good meal. And I totally got it. You know, the more preparation you have, the better that your thing's going to be. Wow. Yeah. And the project only got better because of time. And yes, only time. And, and I was my own producer, which is a marriage made in hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you, you really explore some crazy, dark, brutal themes in this movie. What, what drove you to go there and make that movie? I watched the news. That's it. That's it. You know, uh, and you know, I, I, if you look back, you know, uh, forty-five thousand years to the first, you know, of our ancestors, the Cro Magnons, and uh, you look at the progression of technology and how technology changes everything. You know, and it's just developed at a at an accelerating pass where you know, because of media and whatever, it's made 
people psychotic, you know, like zombies, really, you know, on a number of levels. And um, so, yeah, I'm just very misanthropic, you know. Um, all there is is noise now, just lots of noise. And uh, so, yeah, I'm misanthropic. I don't have much hope for mankind, but I do have hope. Uh, yeah, it's the, the movie is transfixing and uh, beguiling, and I just can't, I just couldn't stop watching it. It was really impressive. Right. And you, uh, you were there kind of when uh, CGI kind of took over. I was right in the middle of it. I was drug into it, kicking and screaming. What was going through your mind? And well, did you think I then overreacted that... emotionally at first, but, you know, that went away pretty quickly. I got a lot of support from, you know, Dennis Muir and Steven Spielberg and Kathy Kennedy. So that kind of allayed any fears. You know, I just saw the writing on the wall. It was like, okay, you know, because everything changes with technology, you know, from the Tauntaun to Dragon Slayer, I just had to rethink everything, you know, so I'm, I'm used to doing that. And why did stop motion, physical stop motion prevail? And, and, and why is it still pretty resonant today? Well, it's handcrafted, you know, and, um, you're shooting real objects and not some, you know, really well rendered three dimensional cartoon. You know, I mean, all this stuff kind of looks like that to me. So, <laughs> is there anything that got even close to feeling like real life for you? No, no, I, I, I don't judge things that way. I mean, you know, on for instance, you know, Jurassic Park and Starship Troopers you don't try and make anything real, you know? It's a theatrical piece, so you make things hyper real, uh -huh. you know, more than themselves, and then the audience is more likely to accept it as reality, you know, even if it doesn't look like it. Got it. Well, um, Phil, again, thank you uh, for all of your work. Thank you for all of your experience uh, and uh, all the cool moments you've You've brought to life um totally dug this movie it was dark as hell but i loved it and uh thank you thank you for your time and uh best of luck on this release sir great my pleasure all right buddy